Welcome to the next video in our Maintaining a Balance series. This video will be looking at two dot points, describe adaptations of a range of terrestrial Australian plants that assist in minimising water loss and perform a first-hand investigation to gather information about structures in plants that assist in the conservation of water. So we've already looked at adaptations a few times. Uh, we looked at it most recently when we were looking at the mangroves. So we have our three types of adaptations being behavioural, structural and physiological. And in particular, we need to look at terrestrial Australian plants. So again, we've seen this come up quite a few times on the syllabus that we're looking specifically at Australian organisms. Okay, so we need to make sure that anytime we're talking about particular organisms that we have Australian examples that we're able to refer to. And in this particular dot point, we're looking at how they can minimise water loss. So as I said, we have our three different types of adaptations. So structural adaptations refer to the physical features of an organism in order for it to be able to survive in its environment. Behavioural um, adaptations that refer to the changes an organism makes to the way that they act in order to survive. And physiological adaptations which refer to the ability of an organism to carry out different functions that help them to survive. So note the three um, definitions end basically in the same three words. So be able to survive. So an adaptation isn't just a change that an organism makes. If it doesn't help them to survive in their environment, it's not technically an adaptation. Okay. Um, so structural and behavioural adaptations we can quite visibly see, whereas our physiological adaptations are those that take place within the organism that can often be a little bit trickier to, to see or understand. So there are a number of different adaptations that help minimise water loss in Australian plants. Um, so this video just sort of goes through the adaptation with a few Australian examples. It's your job to take that a little bit further and try to find some specific Australian plants that do each of these things. So one adaptation is that plants have shiny or hairy leaves uh, that help reflect the heat from the plant and therefore reduce water loss by, by evaporation. So as we can see here, there's tiny little hairs on the surface of this leaf, which will help to reflect the heat and um, therefore help reduce the water loss by, ev by evaporation. Plants can also reduce water loss by evaporation by closing the stomata. Okay, so during the hottest part of the day, they can close the stomata and that will stop the water being lost from those openings. And by reducing the size of leaves to small spines or scales, the surface area for water loss is reduced. So here we have a casuarina where it's got those pine leaves or pine needles. And these are actually all individual leaves. And the, so therefore, by reducing the surface area available for water loss, the plant is able to um, retain as much water as possible. Uh, swollen stems, so like this one here, this is a boab tree. So um, this is the, uh, the stem of the plant, and this is a person down here, just to give you a bit of perspective. So this part of the plant is able to store large quantities of water. So as we can see from the picture, this plant is in quite an arid environment, so there isn't a great deal of water available. So when there is water available, the stem fills up with water to some extent and then keeps that water there to try to keep the plant um, alive. So rapid life cycles is another adaptation that allows the plant to flower and produce seeds when water is available. So seeds won't germinate unless there's water available. So some Australian plants have that ability, ability for the seeds to remain dormant until there's enough water available for it to happen. Uh, stomates that are sunken or reduced in number or only on the underside of the leaf help to reduce water loss by evaporation. So eucalyptus trees are one um, tree that has the majority of their stomata on the underside of the leaf and that obviously along with the way that the leaves hang helps to stop the water loss by evaporation. Waxy cuticles which again are our eucalypts on leaves such as uh, those on eucalypts, I just said so, provide the leaves with a waterproof coating to reduce water loss by evaporation. So as we can see here, the water just sort of sits on top, showing that it's got a waxy surface, but it also stops the water from leaving the leaf. Uh, extensive root systems like this plant here increases the plant's ability to draw water from the soil. Again, we can see this is a fairly dry environment. So by increasing the amount of root surface area, you're able to 
increase the amount of water that can enter the roots via osmosis. Some behavioral adaptations of plants, we don't often really think that plants have behavioral adaptations because you know, we think that they're plants, um, but they can change the way that they are situated, where they're facing, etc., um, in order to reduce the surface area in particular. So this um, plant here, the leaf has rolled. So by rolling the leaf, um, when it gets warm, the water that leaves the leaf is trapped within that rolled, um, that rolled part, so it doesn't actually escape to the atmosphere, stays within the leaf. Same with curling, or if it's too hot, not, um, there's not enough water, the leaf can actually fall or the plant can actually get rid of leaves by shedding and then that way they're not expending any energy and water on trying to keep those leaves alive. So uh, you'll be doing a first-hand investigation to have a look at a number of those different adaptations that we've just talked about. Okay, so there will be a range of Australian species available for you in class as well as hand lenses and microscopes where you'll be able to observe uh, and identify some of the different adaptations that we've talked about in this video to minimise water loss. And that brings us to the end of this video and the end of the Maintaining a Balance series. So I hope you found these videos helpful and good luck with your studies.